Hello YouTube and welcome back to Dark Moon Metals. Uh, today in the shop we're going to be talking about calibers, three different styles. By the end of the video you should know how to read all three including the uh, vernier caliber. Uh, we have a dial caliber and we have a digital caliber. So let me quickly explain the difference between all three and then we'll get to reading them. What we're going to be using to help us today is a set of gauge blocks that was made by the Ford Motor Company. Um, I know this is a division of Ford. I thought this was really cool. I'm not exactly sure where this came from, but um, what gauge blocks are, if you don't know, these are precision ground blocks, uh, four inch block, three inch block, two inch block, one inch block, and it goes all the way down. And this is to help you calibrate inspection tools. So we're going to be using these to read on the calipers. All right, guys, we're going to start out with this one. This one is a hundred and forty-seven thousandths. So the first calipers we're going to measure with are going to be the digital calipers. Now, as you can see, this one is not reading zero. If the calipers are completely closed and it's not reading zero, there on most digital calipers, there's a reset button or a zero button. So click that and that'll bring you back to zero. So I'm going to take the 147 thousandths gauge block and I'm going to put it in the calipers. And we're dead on. Okay YouTube, this time we are going to use the dial calipers. I've got my 147 thousandths gauge block and these jaws are completely closed, but as you can see, this is not reading zero. Uh, the face of these dials are designed to move, so if it's not reading zero, uh, make sure it is completely closed. And then with your fingers, all you have to do is rotate that dial until it lines up right on the zero, and that's how you zero out the dial calipers. All right, so now I'm going to take the gauge block, stick it in there. Now, this one is reading 47 thousandths, but what you need to do is look down here. You can see that it's past the 100 thousandths mark. So you add 100 thousandths to the 47, and it's a hair off, it's about a half a thou off, but it's about 147 thousandths. If it read this, get it up here, oops. You can see how it's past the 2. So here, it's not quite dead on 47, but you would add 200 thousandths to the 47, and that would give you 247 thousandths. But that's what it reads with the gauge in. So you can see that the gauge is past the 1, and 47 thousandths for the 147 thousandths. This one appears to be about a half a thou off, but not too bad. And last but not least, we're going to be doing the vernier calipers. Now, we're only going to focus on the bottom scale. We're going to keep everything in thousands for this video. So I'm going to put the gauge block in. Now, this is pretty difficult to read. I'm going to put this down so I can get the camera a little bit closer. All right, YouTube, this is about as close as I can get before uh, I start losing pieces of the scale. This is the 147 thousandths gauge block. And this scale goes from 0 to 25, which means that this is an increments of 25 thousandths. So if you look over here, you have 0, 25, 50, 75, 100 thousandths. So each one of these is 100 thousandths. So 100, 200, 300, 400, and so on, up to 1 inch, and then it starts over again. Uh, how you're going to read this we know the zero is past the 100 thousandths mark. We know the zero is past the 125 thousandths mark. So we need to figure out what in addition to 125 thousandths this scale on the bottom represents. So we're not quite to 150 thousandths. So we know it's less than 150. If we work our way up this scale, what you're doing is you're trying to find which one of these lines line up with one line on the top scale. And if we come down to the 22, you see that it lines up just about perfect. There are some that are extremely close, 
but the 22 is the only one that lines up perfect. And this right here is the reason why vernier calipers aren't really used that much anymore. You need really, really good eyesight to see this. Uh, I'm using a fine eyeglass screwdriver to point this out. So we know that it's at the 22 mark. So if we take 125 thousandths and we add 22, that gives us the 147 thousandths of the gauge block. And just to give you an idea of how small these are, I'm going to come in here. That is a penny. So that's why these aren't as popular as they used to be. You need really good eyesight to use them. Okay, I'm going to do one more for you real quick. The zero is past the three, so we know we have at least 300 thousands. It's past the 25 thousands mark, and is it or is it not on the 50? Let's take a really close look. I have a loop. See if we can get the camera to cooperate here. Uh, get it focused, focused. There we go. Okay. The zero is on the 50 thousands mark, so we have 350 thousands. Let's take a look at the gauge block. Okay, here is the block, and sure enough, 350 thousandths. So one last quick note on these calipers. I showed you how to zero both the digital and the dial. I didn't show you how to zero these. If you're wondering about that, it's because this doesn't have any kind of a variable in it. Uh, you don't have a digital track that can get messed up or bumped. Um, it doesn't have a dial where the base is going to move on you. To get this to zero, all you have to do is bring the jaws together and unless you've beat on these things with a sledgehammer they will read zero when they're shut so there is no way to reset the zero on these particular type of caliper so with all the advances that they have in technology why are people still using anything as earlier well when it comes to calipers I can understand you go to Harbor Freight you can buy a digital pair that's halfway decent for about 20 bucks and if you're not doing precision work, it really will get you by. But learning how to read a vernier scale can come in handy for other things. One of those things is in this box. I know if there are any machine shop guys around right now, they're pretty curious. This is a really, really decent sized box. <laughs> yeah, my father had a thing for Harleys. Can't say it, I blame him. This right here is another reason why it's a good idea to learn vernier scales. This is a height stand. Now unlike calipers, they don't make cheap versions of height stands. They make ones that are, you know, inexpensive, but a good height stand uh, with a lab plate is a really, really nice thing to have, especially if you're doing any kind of machine work and you're doing a lot of different layout. Now I want to show you the vernier scale on this. Now the way this works, this base is zero. So this will sit on a surface plate, usually made of granite. And this, when it's all the way on the surface plate, even with the base, it will read zero. And then what you can do is you can uh, raise it up however high you want. Like let's say you have something that's um, a half an inch thick and you want to put an even line and divide it in half you would set this for 250 thousandths and then you can scribe a line and it's dead center on your half inch piece now the way this scale works let me go up to it you'll notice that this scale goes up to 50 that means each one of these lines represents 50 thousandths See how there's only one in between the four inch and the four inch one hundred thousandths. So that's fifty thousandths, one hundred thousandths, one fifty, two, two fifty, and so on. And you line up just like you did on the last scale. But this one is a heck of a lot easier to read. So learning the Vernier method isn't a waste of time, especially when you can come across really nice tools like this they're not sought after anymore because a lot of the stuff is going to dial in uh, digital. And this is, you know, it's a Starrett, so it's pretty high-end. 
there's the model number and everything so yeah that's definitely an advantage right there because if you come across something like this that you could pick up uh, relatively inexpensive because it's based on you know a system that not a lot of people some people don't even know how to read anymore even in machine shops you could pick up something really nice for a lot less money than trying to find something brand new all right YouTube I hope you learned something new I hope you found the video helpful uh, I want to say thank you to all you guys out there who stuck with me this long right now we're almost up to 5200 subscribers which is something that I never thought was going to ever happen. Um, I never thought I'd become, you know, one of these huge mega channels with thousands of subscribers. But, uh, you know, I'm really happy that I have a following and people are learning stuff and they're asking me questions. And, you know, it really makes me feel useful. If you have anything that is machine shop related that I might be able to help with or welding related or even some of the light blacksmithing work that I do, Ask in the comments below and I'll do my best to try to answer your questions. For now, I'm going to wrap up the video here. This has been Jeff at Darkwing Metals and I'll see you again soon.